Okay, so we are out here today on the River Saw in Leicestershire, one of my favourite venues. Uh, this is uh, the Sutton Bonington Stretch, which is controlled by Loughborough Saw Angling Society. Um, we've come today to do some feeder fishing on the river, uh, a couple of different methods, uh, different ways and approaches of uh, getting the most out of your feeder fishing on a river. Um, so I'm going to go and put some bait in and um, hope we catch some fish. Right, so today, um, obviously focus, focusing on, you know, on feeder fishing, um, we've gone for like, like a three line approach, so to speak, really. So there's a number of different species here. Um, you know, there's roach, perch, chub, there's some chub, there's some skimmers, bream, um, you know, and I want to try and get the most out of my peg. So, because we're just feeder fishing, I've put in a line down my peg, uh, downstream, with some ground bait at the start. Uh, that's for targeting skimmers, bream, you know, other fish that might come along, might catch a chub off it if we're lucky. Um, then I've underarmed a couple of feeder falls down here with some chopped lobworms in, dendrobinas. That's gonna be for looking at fishing a, bo a little bomb over the top. Uh, I'm loose feeding casters there, so I can try like double caster, double maggot on a bit later on. Um, Rod just went in. <laughs> and then I've started on a little maggot feeder. Um, this is basically just to sort of get me off the mark, catch catch me some fish. So got a little little roach there. Um, just gonna look him. And yeah, this is really to start off. I might I might catch you know I've caught a roach straight away. Um, a few perch perhaps. Uh, if, we, if we're really lucky, might catch a big fish on it. But um, ultimately, it's just about like having a, a few areas to work and trying to get the best from them. Um, so we will see how it goes. So what I'm uh, looking for here when I'm fishing the feeder, it's, it's very, very slightly different um, to fishing it as you would do on a still water obviously because the body of water that you're fishing in is moving. So what I'm trying to do is create a little, um, one on that. Let's try and create a little bit, I missed that bite then, but just to explain, I'm um, trying to create a little bow to the feeder um, so that when a fish picks up my bait, um, it's going to hook itself against the weight of my feeder. So get, basically getting the weight of your feeder to the flow sort of ratio is critical when you, whenever you're feeder fishing on a river. It's like massively important and the, the anglers that work it out the fastest are the ones that generally catch the most. Um, so today where we are here, we're not faced with like mega flow or anything. So I'm only fishing like 20 gram today, but what I'm doing is when I've cast that in there, I'm sort of like putting my rod almost directly at it. And then when the feeders hit the bottom, I'm allowing just a tiny bit of line to come off and then really, really slowly turning the reel handle so that I can like almost feel, that was a little bite then, when a fish has hooked itself. So although like these are small roach that we're catching, but it's 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 relevant for anything um, that you any type of species of fish that you catch on a river. It's very, very important to get it right. Um, and it'll catch you a lot more fish when you do. So main key points are um, getting the weight of your feeder right, making sure that you tighten enough to it to create a little bow in your line, but then also not too much so that you miss every bite so it's about getting that balance right at the end of the day um, and once you find it you'll find yourself hooking 
virtually every fish. Um, and it's especially true with like roach and dace that are notoriously harder to catch on a on a feeder set up on a river. Um, bigger fish like bream and skimmers, it doesn't matter so much, but it's still important to sort of stick to them principles. So after like a few casts with some small fish, um, getting a lot of like indications, and I was fishing like double maggot, even triple maggot, I was still getting like a few bot, a few, um, a few, you know, just a lot of small fish there. So I've, I've just changed tactics a little bit. And on the same rig, I've just put a big hook on, an half a lobworm tail, and chucked out, and it's gone straight away. And I've got what looks to be a nice perch. And here's a nice perch. We'll have him. So, same spot. You know, he's sat in amongst all them other fish. But literally, just change your milk bait. It's caught my perch. It's probably getting on for two pound if it isn't two pound. So it's a cracking fish from, you know, from a river. It's beautiful. And the new MXB hooks in there. With half a lobby tail on. Beautiful fish. Pop him in the net. Let's see if we get, get another one. Right, so um, bring you up to speed a little bit. I've just changed tactics again. Um, had a, spent a little period on, of time on the maggot feeder, a few roach, had that nice perch. Um, and now I just want to try my other line. I, th I, felt, I feel like it's had time to settle. If there's any bream and skimmers about, um, we should pretty much catch them straight away. Might have to wait, might have to be a case of building it up, but this is the line of fed downstream. Um, so with this one, I'm just fishing a, a small ground bait feeder tiny little feeder, there's a few mince worms in there, like literally three or four casters. Um, and I'm going, going to go in with like two tiny bits of worm on the tip with a pinky, um, which tends to be a really good bait on this river. Um, just on a meter hook length. And just going to try this, see, see what we can catch. And hopefully it'll go around first time. One little important consideration, even when you're fishing downstream, I still really want to try and get a little bow in my line. So what I did then was flick my line that side after my feed has gone in so that it helps to put that tiny little bow in your line. Um, and I can then just ever so gradually just tighten down to the feeder and it'll be set up again like perfectly in case we get any dropbacks. You tend to find when you're fishing downstream on a river, if you ever need to chuck down, that it um, you do get a lot of like sort of pulls on it, as so to speak, because it's it's act, it acts differently. Um, so it's worth bearing in mind that you might need to pick up on some of them. Um, not always the case. Um, sometimes you get still nice little drop backs and stuff, but you tend to get a few more bites where it it just sort of like you get like little tiny plucks at it. So um, obviously with this line, I put a little bit of bait there at the start. Um, I know there's a little bit of bait in the area. Don't I didn't put loads in, and I'm basically just going to try and feel my way into it. Um, it's kind of like when you, almost like when you're fishing on a pole. It, you wouldn't sort of just start fishing an area on a pole. You, you'd sort of want to cup some bait in there um, to sort of create a bit of an area and then perhaps leave it. Similar sort of thing when you when you feed a fishing really. So I'm just trying to sort of replicate the same principle. I'm 
And I mean, in terms of like how long I'm going to leave it in for, the fish will pretty much tell you when they're there. There's a little little tap then. Um, you know, it might be a case that like you catch a few perch and roach first. Um, it could be that we don't catch any bream and skimmers and it, they just have an off day. They're, they're not easy fish to catch, especially on a river. Um, that's, see, that's a little roach there, look. And that's on two little bits of worms. So that's already, that's telling me that there's not obviously a massive shoal of bream there because that was one of the first things to my bait. Um, but we'll keep plugging away and we'll see how it goes. So a really important factor whenever you're fishing a feeder on a river, uh, whether it's big, small, whatever, is where to position your rod. Generally speaking, it's better to have your rod positioned sort of downstream of your fishing position ever so slightly. Um, bigger flows and more powerful rivers, or if it's in flood, require you to fish like a bigger bow to your feeder and to obviously counteract that you want to be positioning your rod a bit further down so it is very important it's no good sort of chucking your feeder in a spot and then putting your rod up here and having like a real tight line to it because you won't hit any bites and you'll become frustrated whereas if you sort of chucking ever so slightly downstream in your fishing position or even in front of you when you hit your clip behind you you can then put your rod towards the rest get it in the right position and you're automatically sort of forming a bow to your line uh, to your feeder sorry and it is very very important um, whenever you fish in a river to get that right I, c I cannot stress it enough so in terms of like where I position it, um, it's, it's really to do with where I'm actually chucking it. So here, I'm chucking it ever so slightly downstream, probably at like a one o'clock position. So I've got my rod almost in line with where I'm chucking my feeder, but it's, it's pointing downstream. My line is going like around down to my feeder. Whereas if it was this way or in front of me, my line would be too direct to my feeder, in which case I'd need probably more lead to hold the bottom. So here today I've got a line at one o'clock and a line at, it's probably nearer three o'clock, Pro probably a bit up, about, about two, two o'clock perhaps actually, to be fair, but it's a lot further down. So like, I won't put my rod there when I'm fishing down there, I'll, I'll angle it downstream so I'm still getting that slight bow in my line. And it's the same principle here. If you're doing anything shorter and the flow's not too drastic, um, generally speaking, you can just put your rod down and have your line pointing in towards and down to it because you don't need to form a bow. There's not really any need to, to be honest, um, because you're directly sort of where your bait's going in. So sort of like where I'm throwing them casters there, I know when I flick my bomb over it on my feeder, I can, it'll be behind my feeder there, and I'm sort of like direct on the fish, so to speak. Again, it's, it's just really important to not have it in the wrong place, uh, because you'll end up either missing bites, getting frustrated, um, and basically not maximizing the potential of uh, the, the swim in front of you. And to go with that, different, rates of flow so to speak so different rivers require different rod positions if you like so you know you might fish like a really slow sluggish river so say i don't know like somewhere like the tees or somewhere like that um it's like there's hardly any movement on it and you can have your rod down in those in instances because you're not you don't really need to try and make a bow in your line the saw today where we are this is 
it's a slow moving river there's a little bit of water on it i've got my rod ever so slightly up but it's sort of like in my eye line i'm not i've not got it right up in the air and i've not got it right down it's kind of almost in between whereas today for example if i was fishing on the trent um there'd be a lot more water to contend with it's a lot more powerful uh, i'd need heavier feeders rods and ultimately I'd, I'd want to get my rod up further in the air so that the the bow that you create and the lead that you're using is all sort of married up and um and working as, as one and it's again this exactly the same here what when i'm fishing here um i know that like i'm maximizing the potential of my feeder getting a bite and everything where i'm chucking it and how i'm positioning it as opposed to like if i had it down here for example i mean it does pay to alter it sometimes some days it doesn't always work and some days you might need to fish a bigger heavier feeder especially like if you're dace fishing for example, on a river and a heavier feeder and then tightening right down to the feeder and looking for like little rattles and then picking up on those. But that's a different kettle of fish altogether. So, um, <laughs> another chuck out and then I've, I've had a like a really strange bite on a, on a lob worm on this maggot feeder and picked up and felt a big fish on thought it might have been a big chub but no it's uh well it's a nice size pike you know um but unfortunately in matches we fish they don't count so he's gonna go back can't put him in the net So I'm just going to run you through the setup that I'm using today uh, and what I sort of generally use on these type of rivers. Um, like I've already sort of mentioned before that you need to balance all your gear up. Um, you know, it's really important to get all them elements right to sort of get every fish you hook in the net. So today I've gone for an Horizon X-Class. Um, these are sort of the new improved versions of the old rod um cracking rod to be fair really really nice two piece um casting weight of 60 gram which for like small to medium sized rivers is perfect um and then i've got a reel uh, a 4000 reel with um 018 or eight pound if you like um if you're old school like that um mono <coughs> uh, that's the horizon mono um, I've again got a 10 pound shock leader um, which I connect sort of like top to bottom on the reel um, you know so two rod lengths worth of shock leader and then the actual setup I'm using and this is what I use a lot uh, for my river feeder fishing is uh, so I'll slide a bead on first like a little float rubber stopper um, then a swivel uh, I, I really like these ones, the little ones with the bead on again, uh, keeps it all sort of uniform. Um, I've then got another float stop there, um, so I slide all that on the line first, then do a small twizzled loop, that's probably four inches long. Um, I then bring that float stop back over the top of that knot so that that sits off nice and straight. Um, Obviously, I attach my hook length into that loop there with my hook on, depending on what size and what bait I'm using. And then this, it enables me to either lock it off like that if I'm missing bites or if like it's really good for like dace fishing um, on the rivers, lock it off like that. If I want a bit more, um, I generally have it sort of about that far apart, about two and a half to three inch apart. I generally find that's the best there's just enough sort of like give in the rig so it's not freely free running and you don't get tangles um but ultimately if you were fishing again like probably with a bit more water on i'd maybe move it up like that so there's about i don't know 12 inches or so um again it's about balancing the feeder and you'll sort of understand this when you 
start to fish with this this sort of setup in that it does different things um so you know feeder wise i've got like just a 30 gram cage on there it's a four square cage um but like i say it's a versatile setup it's pretty much tangle free um you don't really get any tangles with this because it's sort of direct if you like um i don't like using um a feeder link from the feeder with this particular setup i probably would on a still water but with this on a river i like the feeder near to the main line there's like less movement there if you like um so i feel like it's a better rig for fishing on a river so this setup here um, that i've got it's exactly the same on the other rod the only difference is is the rod itself it's a tiny bit longer little bit more casting weight because i'm fishing a longer chuck down my peg and that is literally the only difference to be honest um so yeah just keep it simple keep it all the same yeah. hopefully it'll help you guys and girls uh catch a few more fish next time you're out so give it a try Right, so um, I've just had a couple of quick chucks on a ground bait feeder, um, trying to catch some skimmers. It seems at the minute they don't really want to play ball. Um, so I've been loose feeding a line here, um, sort of just downstream, like close into my bank. Um, and I'm going to um, just underarm a small little link lead there, um, small bomb. I've got a little lobby tail on. Um, there and i can always change to like double caster double maggot put a longer tail on if i think there's a few roach about that sort of thing um but i just want to see if there's any big fish about for a minute so what i'm gonna do i've just been feeding like downstream of me where that bait's gone in there and then all i'm gonna do I'm just gonna flick my lead down just a little bit past it And then this, in this instance, I'm going to just put my rod down and I just rest it on my net. Literally, like, get my net set. So my rod's sort of just out of the water. Um, just sort of tighten down to my lead a little bit. I've only got a really light lead on there. Um, I think it's about seven gram, that is. Um sometimes this can take a little bit of you know you have to chuck about a little bit to sort of find where they want to be they'll be usually in one or two places on a river there will either be some act under your bait where them casters are going in or they'll be further downstream which is why it's really important to feed them downstream um so that I can get underneath my bait properly and get my rod in the right place. Because um, if I was to feed them straight in front of me there, I've almost got to put my rod down here at like a funny angle and it's not really conducive to getting the most out of my, out of my peg and hitting the most bites. Much prefer it like this where the line's sort of directly down to it. Um, I'll know if there's any fish in and around that area you know if there's a few bigger fish there and stuff you might get some liners and that sort of thing but like i say i've been feeding casters there for a fair fair amount of time now um i feel like it's right sort of time to drop on it All right, so just dropped on this um, little short line. I have to do a little bit of manoeuvring here because there's a lot of snags close in. Um, yeah, I've just dropped on this short line. All right, with a little bump, we've been feeding some casters and nailed us another nice perch. And literally, that has took that on the drop as it's gone in. Like a little bit further down the peg, I just put a different worm on, changed from a little lobby tail to um, 
a small dendrobina. Into the uh, disgorger. And now there's another one. And it's just like making little little changes to what you're doing. Keep the bikes coming. It's a hard day today. So they're not they're not being easy to catch. Um, but there is a few feeding, so like I said, I'm just like loose feeding some casters. There, two 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 at a time. Like two lots at a time. Um and because I just caught that one there on a that was on a single single small worm. Um I was trying to catch a smaller one to be honest, or like pick off like a little skimmer or something perhaps, but I'm now just gonna put two on, two full dendras, and chuck it in the same spot. That's like Right down my peg, and that's just settled up there. Just, it's only a light little lead. So you just keep in contact with it. And sometimes, the, like they have it, just as it sort of flies in past the nose. I've had a couple like that today where that's happened, and then other times I've had to sort of leave it. But it pay, it does pay you to when you're fishing like this when you're not actually using a feeder to just keep flicking and searching around in your peg and picking picking them off because they'll be all around that loose feed i think today the most of them are um sort of perhaps i'd say one and a half rod lengths down from where i'm fishing down, sorry, down from where I'm um, firing the casters in there. And I can easily throw them in by hand. It's a good depth there. Um, goes sort of straight off from down here. It's probably 10, 11 foot. Um, so there's a good, a good depth there. There's a little, little pull then. Yeah, another one. Not as big as this one, I don't think. They do give a good fight though, these perch do. Always, always the same. Another nice one. Not as big as the last one. And not the biggest I've had today, but certainly. Oh, worms come out in the mouth. Come out in the net, that one. Should I say? Another one, probably getting on for a pan, that one, perhaps. Um, nice fish again, really nice weight builders in a match, these are re like really important fish to catch on uh, on river matches, you know, anything, you know, that sort of size, really going to help build your weight up in a match, so just give them a few more casters, I'm giving them a fair amount of bait now really, to be fair, you know, um, not being shy with it, I'm probably feeding like 40 at a time, 50 at a time. Another nice fish, that one. Beautiful. Looks like he's been had a go by a cormorant or something, that one, or one of his mates has had him at some point in time. He's had that bait really well there. Like that. Seems to be the bait at the minute. Um, but that is a cracking fish and we'll probably call it a day at that to be honest because we've had quite a few now and it's getting on a bit, it's getting a bit late, it's getting a bit cold so probably going for my tea to be honest but uh, yeah it's a lovely fish to uh, finish on that one. Popping back, join his mates, 
might have another truck. <laughs> if Adam will let me. But yeah, I had a really uh, nice, enjoyable day, to be honest. It's, uh, it's been lovely. Um, really had to sort of work hard at it and a bit unorthodox as just fishing a feeder. Uh, obviously, I'd normally target a venue like this with a pole, but it's been nice to see what we can catch just by using a feeder and a straight lead and just feeding it in a different way. Um, quite amazing, really, to be honest. What's about? I am going to have another chuck, I think. Yeah, I just uh, hope you've enjoyed the video, picked up a few tips and um, that will help you in your own fishing. So that's why we do these videos, it's what it's all about. You know, just passing information on that I've learned over the years and um, just nice to be able to put it out there to everybody else and, you know, for you guys to enjoy really, to be honest. And, uh, and girls, I think we'll probably call it a day at that. I'll probably leave this rod in and uh, get get wrapped up. Shouldn't take too long. We've only set two feeder rods up, so all right. And I'll catch you next time.